President Kovar is speaking. He says his government is committed to bringing perpetrators responsible for the banking crisis to justice. At the 71st University of Ghana New Year School, the president, who cited corruption as one of the bane against attaining the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, disclosed there is an ongoing court case and persons found culpable will be prosecuted. We have begun bringing those responsible for the banking crisis to justice. We have one case in court, and if prima facie evidence of criminality is found in the other ongoing investigations, which according to my information is likely, then the perpetrators of the crises, i.e. both regulators and individuals, will face justice soon. President Ekufuado noted painful but necessary steps had to be taken to rescue the banking and financial sector. Government is said to have spent some 12.58 billion cities of taxpayers' money in the banking sector cleanup alone. President Ikufadu mounted a strong defense for the decision to expend that amount of money for the cleanup exercise, said it has safeguarded depositors' money and minimized job losses. It is worthy to note, however, that the jobs of some 6,500 workers were saved as a result, instead of the 10,000 that could have been lost, in addition to the protection of funds of 4.6 million depositors. We have also ensured the creation of a strong set of indigenous banks. The latest banking sector report of the Bank of Ghana reveals that as of October 2019, the banks posted a profit of 2.9 billion CDs, representing a 45% increase over that of 2018, as the reforms initiated by the central bank begin to take effect. On corruption, the president reiterated his resolve to have any official in his government investigated and further prosecuted if prima facie evidence is established. Corruption will not be defeated just by exhortations, however well-meaning. The capacity of the accountability institutions of our state, such as Parliament, the Judiciary, the Office of the Attorney General, Shraj, and the Auditor General, has to be enhanced and given the muscle to tackle corruption head-on. He disclosed that some public officials during the Mahama regime are being prosecuted 21 officials of the previous administration are standing trial over their involvement in alleged acts of corruption or causing financial loss to the state, amounting collectively to the tune of some 772 million CDs. And the courts, at the appropriate moment, will deliver their verdicts in accordance with due process. The School of Continuing and Distance Education of the University of Ghana has in the last 70 years overseen the successful organization of the annual New Year School and Conference. This year will focus on human capital development, effective pension plans towards Ghana beyond aid, among others, with panelists drawn from ministers of state and experts from the private sector and international financial organizations such as the World Bank. There is also a special setting for the youth on Thursday, January 16, with a member of the Council of State, Sam Okujeto, leading a session on Ghana Beyond Aid, the youth perspective, and Ghana Beyond Aid, preparing the youth for the future. The 71st Annual New Year School is on the theme, Ghana Beyond Aid, Prospects and Challenges. Let's just stay a bit further on this developing story with uh, Prince Kofi Amoabing and Mike Ineko uh, facing court today. As you be aware, Mike Ineko is going to be uh, behind but actually remanded for the next seven days as it plays out in court today. But before today, Mike Ineko himself and 12 of the subsidiaries of the Beige Group had already been dragged to court by the receiver that was appointed by the Bank of Ghana after uh, the August 2018 withdrawal of the licenses of Beige Bank then, that's uh, Niamano Dodu. Now, those 
charges or that were actually leveled against Mike Nyoko and the 12 subsidiaries of Beige Group is what I'm going to recall to you right now. So you see exactly how the whole picture looks like as we speak. As of then, particulars of the alleged breaches by Mike Nyoko, then the defunct CEO of the Beige Bank. One, illegally gaining access and siphoning funds of Beige Bank for his personal benefit. And two, allegedly a failure to exercise due diligence in the approval of loans. Also, refusing to disclose his interest in the other 12 subsidiaries, you know, as I mentioned earlier. And he is also said to have refused to obtain approval from the board of directors in advancing loans to those subsidiaries. That's the 12 subsidiaries. It appears also that there was that issue with a failure to act as a faithful, diligent, and careful director in the transaction for and on behalf of Beige Bank, thereby exposing uh, the customers of this financial institution to uh, what they describe as unnecessary risks. So other reliefs that uh, Niamano Dodu is seeking, actually, when he took uh, Beige, that's the, the, the 12 subsidiaries of Beige and Mike Ninako to court, that's a, as of 2018, where the plaintiff is further seeking interest on the various sums of money that Nineko himself is allegedly liable for an order for a perpetual injunction restraining all the defendants from selling, disposing of and or dealing with the assets. And it's also said to be seeking that an order directing the defendants to account to plaintiffs all advantages, benefits, gains and profits derived. So that's how the picture really looks like uh, with that particular case uh, that uh, Nia Manododu, who is a receiver for Beige Bank, brought against him, that's Mike Kineko, and 12 of the subsidiaries of the defunct Beach Group.